Okay, so um, <clears throat> what are we up to today? We want to uh, take a look at linear systems of differential equations and see if we can give the solution. So by, uh, just as a reminder, what is a linear differential equation? Well, if I'm giving in this new notation, right, if we have a vector, a uh, parametric set of vectors, well, let me define that first. Uh, let x of t be equal to a parametric set of vectors. Okay. Uh, then the operator acting on this vector, if that function is linear, the differential operator, then we would say that the differential equation is linear. So for example, um, <coughs> If I have an operator, let's call it L, acting on x of t, and the result is that I take the derivative of x, and then I subtract a matrix, and that can be a matrix in t uh, times the x of t, then this is a linear operation linear operator, meaning, do you remember the definition? L of uh, x plus y is equal to L of x plus L of y, and L of c times x is c times L of x. Now you could verify that these two properties hold, and uh, we'll just assume they do, but in this case what we're saying is that <clears throat> because this is a linear operator, then the differential equation that it corresponds to is called a linear differential equation. Good. So then the differential equation, which is L of x of t, I guess we could call it that way, minus A of t times x of t. When we set it equal to zero, that means we're looking for the homogeneous part of the solution, or the homogeneous solution. And then if we take x prime of t minus a of t times x of t equals some function of t. Uh, now, <clears throat> by the way, is this, a, is this thing right here, is that a scalar, a vector, or a matrix? Uh, right, each piece of this is a vector, right? This is a vector, and then a matrix times a vector is a vector, so this is a vector. So I really should be putting vector notation over my zero, and also over my g of t here, if I have a, and this would be the non-homogeneous equation or solution, depending on if you're trying to solve it or not. Good. So then, uh, if we're trying to solve the non-homogeneous equation, do you remember how to do that? The solution to that equation is always broken up into the homogeneous part plus the particular part, where the homogeneous part solves the homogeneous equation. Okay. Uh, we're not going to talk about the non-homogeneous part of the equation or non-homogeneous equation, um, but this is just some theory that we looked at before. Um, similarly, some other theory, if we have some functions x1 of t, I should say uh, let x of t be a function in Rn, right? Or, yeah, we'll call it Rn, but um, yeah, it's n polynomials of t, right? Or n functions of t, I should say. Uh, if uh, x1 through, let's see, how do I want to say that? I want to, I'm kind of uh, using the definition and the and a shortcut for the definition at the same time here. So let me rephrase this. Let capital X of T be a matrix that's formed by using N of these functions as column vectors. 
then we could say that um, the columns of x of t are linearly independent if, do you remember from linear algebra when the set of columns are linearly independent? Uh, if the de Well, a fast way to do it is to just see if the determinant of x of t is equal to zero or not equal to zero. Not equal to zero, right? Um, by the way, the determinant of x of t has a new name here, and that is the Ronskian. The Ronskian of the n functions, vector functions, is defined to be so the Ronskian of x1 through xn, these are functions of time, is equal to the determinant of that matrix x of t. Okay. And so <clears throat> what we're saying again is that the Ronskian shouldn't be equal to zero in order to have linearly independent solution vectors. Okay. Good. Um, by the way, uh, we should say just like in uh, just like in the differential equations class, <clears throat> we said that the uh, functions will either um, not be zero or equal to zero. I should say the Ronskian is either the Ronskian equals zero or the Ronskian is not equal to zero on the interval uh, of for the solution. What do I mean by that? Uh, so for example, suppose that the Ronskian is equal to the cosine of t. Uh, well, this means that you would have to avoid the zeros of the cosine in order to keep your solutions linearly independent. And so for example, you know, since the cosine comes down like this. Usually we, we're picking the zero out, right? And so if we say that t is between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, right, then uh, this is going to be probably our interval for which the solution exists because we don't want the uh, Ronskian to be equal to zero on that interval. Good. All right. That's a lot of theory. Uh, that's just to remind you kind of what's going on here. Um, what I wanted to do now is to really um, get more numerical now and say how do we solve how do we solve the system of equations x prime of t equals a of t times x of t. Okay, and so to begin with um, Oop, uh, oop, I need to pause for a second. I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that interruption. Um, what I wanted to think about was whether I wanted to do this full case or not, and I think we're going to do something different. Let's just do A times X. So A is now an N by N matrix of constants. Okay, and now how am I going to solve that equation? <clears throat> we actually already know how to solve this in the case of the 2 by 2s, right? So um, what we do is we take our ansatz, which is kind of an educated guess of a solution, and our educated guess is that x of t is going to be e to the lambda t, which is a scalar, times the vector v, which is a vector in Rn, and that is a vector of constants, that v. Okay. Now, if I plug this into my differential equation, uh, the x prime becomes lambda e to the lambda t times v, because that's the only uh, the only place t appears, right, is in this exponential function, and then a times x becomes uh, a times e to the lambda t times v, and this is a scalar, so you can pull it out of its out of that expression. So putting this together, what we end up with is e to the lambda t 
AV is equal to e to the lambda t. I'll go ahead and reorder it just to make it easier to read. Lambda v. So uh, e to the lambda t is not equal to zero for any lambda. So therefore, you can just cancel those out. So therefore, we get that AV must be equal to lambda v. And of course, this equation is probably jumping out at the page at you because that is the defining characteristic of an eigenvalue and an eigenvector. And we should say specifically that v is not equal to zero, the zero vector. Lambda could be zero, but v is not zero. Okay, good. And so now we need to solve, so to find lambda and v, we go through our solution technique uh, for finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And I see I'm already at the 10, 11 minute mark, so I'm going to stop here. And in the next video, we'll, we'll uh, talk about how to find eigenvectors and eigenvalues.